It was another topsy-turvy day in the relegation battle with Brentford defeating fellow strugglers Sheffield United 2-0. Burnley were held 1-0 by Brighton and Luton were heavily beaten by Manchester City 5-1 and Nottingham Forest and Wolverhampton Wanderers drew 2-0. The relegation battle really is hotting up. It's so difficult to predict who's going to go down there. Chopping and changing down there. And Luton, who currently reside in the relegation zone, I do have a feeling that they are somehow going to pull it out of the bag. I really do. I think there is something special going on with Luton Town. They seem to all be singing off the same hymn sheet. And I think that Rob Edwards is doing a remarkable job. So somebody else is going to have to fill that void. Will it be Nottingham Forest? Will it be Everton? Or could somebody else altogether get dragged into it? I think Brentford may have just about got enough now. But Crystal Palace are still flirting with the idea of relegation. So please, if anybody has uh, any strong thoughts on the relegation, battle get in touch let me know we're going to dive back into the callers now there is lewis a newcastle united fan lewis you're on talk sport how are you hello rory you all right mate oh yeah yes i am i'm very well thank you how are you yeah i'm class mate what can i say i'm we're chasing top four tottenham and villa are now on our sights only 10 points away six games left it's possible we got the best striker in the premier league in our team one of the best managers Life's good. So uh, that's that's an interesting point, Lewis. You're you're obviously referring to Alexander Isak there. Yeah, man. Well, Wilson's a close second, but Isak, he's the main boy. Yeah. How, how good is Isak? Because because when he scores the goals that he scored today, and you know they were there were some glorious finishes from him. People start immediately comparing him to Thierry Henry, don't they? You know the way that he opens his body, yeah. that inside of the foot finish. It is it is a beautiful product when he gets it right. But does he do it enough, in your opinion? Well, that, that, come on, Rory, that's not be silly. I mean, imagine if Haaland tried to score that kind of goal. He'd trip over and give himself concussion, knocking his head on the floor. He hasn't got the... He's got two spoons on his feet, whereas Isaac is an elegant, brilliant striker, has everything to his game, and he's playing in an injury-prone Newcastle team and still scoring more goals per minute than that guy. So, Thierry Henry, I said a while ago, this guy, at the end of his career, will be remembered up there with him because he's basically the spitting image. How... how um. How worried are you that Alexander Isak, considering the form that he's in, and you know Newcastle United won't be playing in the Champions League next year? Can you see a world where maybe Arsenal could bid for Alexander Isak? Are you confident that he'll be playing at St James's Park next season? I don't know. I think he has aspirations to win trophies, mate. So Arsenal's not going to be the place to go to. I mean, <laughs> at Newcastle, he's just came out and said this is where he wants to be. This is the project, and at Arsenal. This project's been going on for years and he just managed to scrape an FA Cup and bottle the Premier League. So yeah, he can't argue that. He, he certainly can't argue that. Lewis, I've got something else to ask you. Eddie Howe. Yeah, big man. Is, is he the big man? Is, is he the man for the job? Is he the man to take Newcastle United to the promised land? Can I tell you, right, if Eddie Howe manages to land us in six at the end of the season with the injuries that we've had, that's a bigger achievement than if Arteta manages to not bottle the league this oh. time round. It just simply is because with the injuries he's had, not being able to play the same 11 each week, constant, constant interruptions with the team that he wants to play, still finishing sixth above Man United, who people were tipping to challenge for the title, that would be a bigger achievement than any other manager in the league this season. You, you seem to be mentioning you seem to be mentioning Arsenal an awful lot. This doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Theo Baker, the Arsenal fan, is sitting next to you, is it? I can think I can hear him lurking in the background. Yeah, see you say hello. No, I'm fuming. How does Lewis get away with all of this, you know? He is chatting absolute waffle right now. I'm telling you now, Arsenal bid for Isaac, yeah? And if we meet if we meet the asking price for Newcastle, Isaac leaves in a heartbeat. He wants to be playing Champions League football for a club that is going to win trophies. Newcastle are going to win anything in the next four years. Theo, can he I ask you? Theo, 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 do you think Arsenal beat Aston Villa tomorrow? Comfortably. Best defence in the league. <laughs> 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 We are the best defence in the league. Why are you laughing at that, Lewis? Yeah, no, but you're Arsenal. You, you bottle it every time. He's not going to come to a team that has no aspiration to win the big trophies. We're not going to stop with this whole bottle thing. I'm fed up with this whole bottle. Bottle this, bottle that. We're, we are a new side. We are transformed. Our defence is going to win us the league and the Champions League. There, there, there we have it. That is a that, that is an exclusive on Talk Sport. Theo Baker says that Arsenal are going to win a double. They're going to win both the European <laughs> Cup and the Premier League. I mean, I think that's slightly ambitious, Theo. But you know, you never you never know. Lewis, final prediction goes to you. Do Arsenal beat Aston Villa tomorrow? I think it's a whitewash. Three-one Aston Villa, and then we'll start chasing after Tottenham. It will be. And 
Okay. Arsenal had a good run. It's cute that they thought they weren't going to bother again, but it's in their DNA at this point. So. There we go. Thank you very much, lads, and I'm sure I'll be hearing from you from you both later. Uh, let's stay with the callers now. Daniel, Tottenham fan. How are you, Daniel? Oh, sorry, it's Jacob. How are you, Jacob? Yeah, not too bad. How are you doing there, Rory? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, you, how are you feeling off the back of that performance at St. James's Park today? Oh, well, I have to say I'm not too surprised now. I think the manager, I think he's had his time and I think his time has come. Postacoglu? Yeah, I think I think it's time to go. He's been in. Uh, we've given him we've given him this season and, and yet to see him pull together something consistent. I think we should get Mourinho back in, shore up the defence. That can't be a genuine opinion. It just can't be. Why not? Be- Jacob, you aren't you don't genuinely mean bring Jose Mourinho back to Tottenham in place of Posta Cogley, surely. Well, I, I look at whenever we had Mourinho and we came this close to winning a cup and then we sacked him. Mm. I don't see that happening with Posta Cogley. Been awful in the cups, the league, it's not consistent enough. Mm, okay. I think even if we get the Champions League, we need we need a winner who can win a competition like that. We need Mourinho. All right. All right, cheers then, Jacob. That's that's an interesting take. Uh, Daniel, Tottenham fan, how are you? Yeah, not so good, Rory. Um, but um, I, I'm not going to throw Postacoglu under the bus. Um, yeah, I, I've heard a few people um, say that he's not um, he's not good enough. I don't believe it. Um, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think the problem is the, is the players, and the, there's not enough character within the team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that that may be the case today, but we've got to be very careful here that we don't judge Tottenham off the back of one ninety minutes where it all went wrong. Like, this has been a positive season, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, on the whole. But I'm, I'm very happy with Postacoglu. I think it's been a much better season compared to last season, especially, which was an absolute mess. But I think that there's a problem at Spurs that goes beyond the, the, the manager um, that's been there when Conte was manager, when Mourinho was manager, goes back to Pochettino, that there just aren't enough characters in the team that when Spurs face adversity all too often they go hiding now yeah today was a terrible performance and you can write it off but so was the Fulham performance and there have been a a couple of other performances this season where we've just fallen apart Mm. and I think we just lack a strong character sort of uh, a sort of player in the mould of Postacoglu to sort of drag them over the finish line yeah I know what you mean I know the kind of player that you mean the kind of player that demands the, the effort levels are through the roof at all times. The kind of player that doesn't let you lose away from home when you are the better team. The kind of player exactly. that just insists that the standards are met every single day in training and then during the 90 minutes on the weekend. I do I do know what you mean, but I think I think that this is a slight exaggeration, isn't it? To this season for Tottenham, and again, I don't like the fact that I am beating a drum for Tottenham Hotspur. It really doesn't feel natural <laughs> to me. But Tottenham have been surprisingly brilliant this season. Tottenham will play, barring a disaster, in the European Cup next season. That wasn't yeah, to be expected. And on the whole, I'm happy, but I, I think that we need to address this um, in the transfer market. And we need to find those players that have the character because like, I've, I've been watching Spurs. I'm a season ticket holder. I've been going for, for, for years. I, I'm telling you that, that this is a common issue where we let the other team... Uh, dictate the tempo, let them impose themselves on the game. When we're up for a game, we will smash the opposition like we did against Villa earlier this season. But we're not up for the game enough. And um, I guess we do do need to be patient. Um, and hopefully, Poster Coglu can identify players. But I, I'm behind him all the way. But I think we absolutely need to improve that squad. It, not in terms of quality necessarily, in terms of mentality. There we go. And determination. Thank you so much for your call, Daniel. Now, please do keep your calls coming into this show. Next up, we'll speak to Bob Bupka and we'll take more of your calls. 03717 22334. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.